That day, Superintendent Acott publicly named Peter Alphon as the man wanted in connection with the A6 murder. Bob Acott was convinced that Alphon was the man, no doubt in his mind at all. Now, I'd had 10 years on Fleet Street before I went to the BBC, and I'd never known the police to actually name a person they wanted to talk to in such a positive way, uh, sort of ruling out any doubt that he was the man they wanted. In the middle of the night, Alphon walked into Scotland Yard. Acott returned immediately and interrogated him until 5.15 in the morning. The following day, Alphon was put on an identity parade before Valerie Storey. It was then that she picked out not Alphon, but the innocent RAF corporal and was left in tears. Alphon was set free. Acott had publicly sought Alphon, yet in court, he explained that one of his reasons for eliminating Peter Alphon, apart from the ID parade, was that his suspect was called Jim. The jury was never told that Valerie Storey had actually told Acott that Jim was obviously not the killer's proper name. In court, Acott said that the killer was in his mid-twenties. Hanratty was 25. Acott ruled out Alphon because of his age. He was 30. But Valerie Storey's original estimate of the killer's age had been precisely 30. Alphon, said Acott, should also be ruled out because my inquiries showed he had not driven a motor car. Yet Valerie Storey's evidence had pointed directly to an incompetent motorist. Acott said in court that an important argument in clearing Alphon was that he volunteered for a range of scientific tests. But the latest documents reveal that Alphon refused to tell police where he was keeping some of his clothes and a piece of luggage. Neither the defence nor the jury ever knew about this. It was Han Ratty who, from the outset, had offered up his clothes for forensic examination. Peter Alphon watched in court as Acott ruled him out as the A6 murderer. Hanratty went to the gallows, but it would not be the last that was heard of Peter Alphon. John Justice had a fellow campaigner who also befriended Alphon. As a barrister and member of the establishment, I couldn't really believe that this sort of thing could happen. I knew Hanratty had been convicted. I was meeting Alphon daily. He struck me as a reasonable sort of person. And I was um, highly skeptical of John's claim that Alphon was the murderer. I later became convinced um, Alphon made a verbal confession to the murder to me in the Blue Angel Club in Barclay Square one evening. He asked me to look him straight in the eye, which I did, and he said to me, I did that murder. He said they were obviously an immoral couple in, in the car and he had a mission in life to stamp out vice and immorality. And I said to him, you know, Mrs. Henretti feels pretty badly about her son being hanged for a murder he didn't commit. And the look of anguish that came over Alphonse's face at that moment finally convinced me that he was indeed the A6 killer. A private confession just three months after the execution. Five years later, Alphonse went to Paris, called a press conference and made a public confession. The real reason why I've confessed, and I said it at the press conference, is that I want to drag the name of British justice in the mud where it belongs, I think I neglected to say that at the press conference, where it belongs, in the mud. I might be uh, inviting a lynching, might be inviting a lynching, 
But uh, I think, you see, the thing is this. This murder happened six years ago, and they've hanged uh, someone wrongfully. They've hanged him wrongfully. It was Alphon who first provided a motive for the crime. He said he was asked by someone close to the Gregston family to frighten Valerie Storey and Michael Gregston so that Gregston would return to his wife and children. Alphonse said he had a mission. Crusade was against uh, indecency, immorality. Those two things, that's enough, isn't it? <coughs> Alphonse claimed to have collected £5,000 in the wake of the murder. He has implicated others in his confessions, but there is no evidence against them. But there was more to connect Alphon with the A6 murder. A newly discovered document reveals that Alphon later told other Metropolitan policemen, there can't have been any fingerprints on the car, otherwise mine would have given me away. If you were charged in the future, how would, how would you take that? Uh, with the A6 murder? Yes. I should be... Well, uh, let me, if I said I'd be delighted, uh, well, that may be a little bit hard for your, your audience, the general public, to appreciate. But as I've been charged with so many things that I haven't done, I would at last like to see the British police charge me with something I had done. James Hanratty's father promised his son that he would prove his innocence. He spent years campaigning enlisting the support of prominent politicians, journalists, notably Paul Foote, and celebrities like John Lennon, who sponsored a film about the A6 campaign dedicated to clearing Hanratty's name. Judge for yourselves, and that's all I ask you to do. As 11 witnesses up in North Wales swear in all doubt that Hanratty was there on the night of the 22nd. The Home Office knows they got the evidence, but they just don't want an inquiry. Why? There was doubt at Bedford when they executed him. They know they've got the evidence. Lord Russell, Russell Lord Brockway, Miss Joan Lester, and 180 MPs says in Parliament James Hanratty was innocent. And there they were, the Campaigners believed that there was a straightforward explanation, that someone else had put the gun on a London bus where Hanratty dumped stolen property on a day that no one claimed Hanratty was even in London that the cartridge cases were put in Hanratty's hotel room, although Hanratty had last stayed there three weeks earlier, the night before the murder. <laughs> 